Oh god! Where did the two screens go this time? Here we go. By the way, it's a continuation of the handheld off fest. Welcome everybody to Mario Kart DS. This is your host, the MJ4106. And well, the cycle of one handheld game ended and another one began. So yeah, welcome to Mario Kart DS, one of my favorite entries of the Mario Kart series. For numerous reasons, one we're gonna go over today. It's one of the things I really love about the Mario Kart series. The track design is good. There's a lot of fun to be had where anybody can win as long as you get the right items, of course. This is the first dual screen entry of there only being two slash three if you count Wii U, but who cares about that one? The Switch one's better. <laughs> but either way, um, yeah, there's a lot for me that I enjoy about the Mario Kart series, and this entry is definitely no exception. This used to be my second favorite until Mario Kart 8 really showed its true colors. So now Mario Kart 8's my, uh, oh, second favorite. Sorry. Still gotta give the crown to 64. The stall glasses, I know, but I really love the track design in Mario Kart 64. I can't help it. I love it so much. But yeah. Mario Kart series is a fun one. And we're gonna do something interesting today. It is a Sideshow Saturday series, after all. Which, again, who knows how many of these I have left. I'm actually starting to run out of ideas. Anyway, let me show you what we're doing today. This is the only Mario Kart game to actually feature what we have. The Missions Mode. Which basically, as you can probably guess, is basically performing certain tasks on certain stages and, uh, yeah. Performing well. Which have six different levels of this. Which, by the way, is supposed to be a feature in Mario Kart Wii, apparently, as well. But I guess they, uh, decided that the online event stuff was more important. Oh, well. Doesn't matter to me. This one still has, so I'm fine with that. So, you got to see how it looks playing the game in the demo screen thing, too, so... Yeah, you're getting a bit of a taste of everything, I guess. Anyway, let's go over these missions, shall we? Sorry, mission 1-1. One, one. Drive through all five numbered gates in order. A good one to warm up to. So let's do it, shall we? And well, I gotta say... For the TS... For the Nintendo DS's capabilities, these are actually done pretty well. I mean, I think they look pretty nice for what could be managed with on this system. So yeah. I gotta say, I'm definitely happy with the game we got here. For it to be my second favorite Mario Kart to date. Well, before Mario Kart 8 really unleashed itself. So yep, there you go. You just have to beat the missions, you get a rank. With three stars being the highest. And I believe D being the lowest. But yep. That's all we gotta do here. And well, we're gonna go over all these as quickly as I can. Which hopefully won't take too long. But I guess we'll find out, won't we? So next is mission one, two. Collect all 15 coins. Or I'll show you what happens if we get, um... Yeah, I'll show you what happens if we happen to, uh, not get three-star rank. Because I am going for all three-star ranks, because... That's what makes me happy. Oh, God. You know, it makes sense they would pull, pull, make you collect coins on a, uh... Super Mario... Mario Kart Super Circuit stage. Mar Game Boy Advance. Wow, that was also really easy. These level 1 missions are a very good way to get used to the game. Just give you some general driving ability. This isn't a good first... This isn't a... I mean, bad. <laughs> this isn't a bad first stop if you just picked up this game. At least if I say so myself. Which I forgot... Oh, yeah! Not only is this the first Mario Kart game, the only one to include mission mode, this is the first Mario Kart game to include the retro tracks. Unless you count the Game Boy Advance's, um, uh... You know, ability for you to get the Super Mario Kart ones. The Super Nintendo one to the Game Boy Advance one. That should be simple enough. Destroy all ten item boxes. Okay. And, well, you get your items from the beautiful item boxes. Which, by the way, hold A just as the two is about to disappear for you to be able to, uh, yeah. Get the perfect start. And use, uh, L or X to use items. Which, of course... And that's you gotta make sure you use all the time. Because otherwise, what would be the point? Also, I can tell these friggin' missions are going in like 100cc. But in case you don't know what that means, it's basically, for lack of a better term, it's more or less your speed you're going on. There we go, another three-star victory. And drifting me involves the R button. If you're wondering what I'm doing that gets those sparks of blue and red to come up, 
And basically, if you hop with the R button and then turn while you do that, you'll basically go to a drift. Go back and forth, in this game anyway. And that's how you build those sparks. Get it red, you get a little turbo boost. So, you know, going around turns, that's how you really get speed. Surprisingly amount of strategy for this crazy kart racing game. From the Mario family, no less. All right, what's next? Mission 1-4. Get the star and use it to hit five cheap cheeps. Don't mind if I do. Those damn cheap cheeps, it's finally time for me to get revenge. Cart style, apparently. Oh, and if you hold it too early, that's what happens. So, uh, be careful about that. But I don't care about that right now. Oh, God. Which, by the way, you can't tell the bottom screen there. You basically see what's going on around you. And if I hit the Y button... Oh, no, they don't let you do it in mission mode. In normal races, you press the Y button or touch the touch screen. Well, you can change the screen to becoming a full overall, overall map. And see, there we go. There's a crappy ranking. You do poorly, you get ranks like that. That's why these, you want to get good. Like I said, we're going for all three stars. So, I'll do it the way I normally do with trial stuff like this. I'll try to do it three times legitimately. If I can't do it, I'll time walk to the successful run. Because don't need to waste my time showing you all the crap. But I want to at least show some legitimate attempts just to show my build-up process to getting it right, you know? At least that's my thinking behind it. And there we go! And they flash it to let you know you improved on last time. Good job! And, well, just aim for my general time, do what I do, and you can get your, these three stars as well. Which, for you Wii U owner, owners, which, by the way, in case you can't tell, yeah, I'm not playing the Wii U. I thought about it, but, you know, I can't get the screens to look like this through the Wii U version, so... I like it this way. It feels more proper? Sure, let's go with that. That, and I'm not emulating it either, which is pretty sweet. Anyway, mission 1-5. Drive through all six number, numbered gates in order. Hmm. We had five, now we have six. Five, six. God damn it, what am I doing? Doesn't matter. Oh yeah, here's one of the uh, battle stages, which... Oh yes, of course, there's a battle mode as well. If you don't like the idea of racing, no need to fret. It's not all about just racing to see who the fastest is. It's also seeing who's the most dominant with weapons and all that. You can grab items around the arena and beat each other up with them. Beat them to hell. Also, damn, I only got two stars. Well, that's a shame. Let's go for it again. See, that's the way the mission mode works. The faster you are, the better ranking you'll get. Oh, god damn it. Which, by the way, you can also restart if you don't like the way you begin. Which, I'll say this right now. Getting a... Should I call it a false start? Getting a bad start basically automatically get you out of the running for a three-star. Because, yeah, this game can be brutal at times. You see, that was a little better. Even the little slightest mistake you fix can improve your rank dramatically. It really is quite something. Makes the mode fun? Sure, let's go with that. Oh, here's a fun one. Mission 1-6. Drive out of the mansion. Backwards. Which, of course, you can back up if you hold down and B. But for this one... Oh, no. They're making you do it like this. Because screw you. Thankfully, they make it so it's easy for you to tell. And by the way... When I'm doing it like this, left and right reverse, because that's how backing up is when you drive. So, yeah. Hold the B button and just let it do the work for you. Mission mode, they at least accommodate some things, make it easier for you to actually, like, you know, perform. But, you know, as long as you know how to generally play the game, it's not hard. Which, God, if they made me do it backwards, using just the overhead map, that would suck so bad. At least you asked me it would. And when next is mission 1-7, collect all 20 coins. I see they're starting to increase the difficulty of some of these. Oh boy. Well, DK, you go, my big monkey friend. I'm depending on you to do my work for me. Oh no! 
Maybe I shouldn't restart immediately. Maybe I should actually do a legitimate attempt, even if I miss them and have to go back for them, which... Which, yeah, you can probably generally assume from this that... If you're doing stuff like coin collecting, if you happen to miss any on your way, you're probably not going to get three stars. Okay, so drifting was a terrible idea. Duly noted. I'm the one who blew this one. But goddamn, I gave my best effort. And for that, I got one star. I got one golden star! Yay! <laughs> they think I'm special! What the hell am I even talking about right now? I don't know. Whatever, let's try again. Ugh. Alright, so I'll just not try to do anything crazy. Except for here, I guess. I do want to make take advantage of the drifts when I can use them, because those are your ace in the hole when it comes to turds. If you can drift and get those drift boosts real well, oh yeah, you're going to be flying ahead of the competition. Well, you know, AI speaking anyway, computers and all that. Oh yeah, this is also the first Mario Kart game to feature online play, which, with only a few of the game's tracks, which is weird, but I had fun with it, and then we did. It was a good time playing online to this one. I still prefer over Mario Kart Wii. <clears throat> anyway, perform four power slide turbo boosts in one lap. So yeah, that drifting, that's what I'm talking about. We got something like this. Ooh, good track for it, too. So this, I basically consider this like a time for a lap. So remember, when you're driving and going up to a curve, hold R, hold R and start turning. But you gotta hold that jump button. And then the way you're turning, mash right and left. Again, only in this game. In the later games, it just automatically accrues as you go around a curve. So yeah. You wanna get used to doing that. In the old Mario Kart games, it's all about going back and forth. You can actually build more quickly, which is a little more broken. I believe something like that could lead to the way of uh, what some racing games have in the form of uh, snaking? I believe it's called. Oh yeah. Here's something weird. This game has boss battles. And when you first unlock it, they make it sound really, really creepy. If you like, an enemy is approaching and they have freaking you can hear the faint sounds of it in the background. But anyway, here's our first boss stage. Use mushrooms to crash into the big bully and knock him off the stage. So let's have some fun. So here's the first boss. Which, good lord, it's the big bully from Super Mario 64. I can't believe it's back for action. So, oh god. Well, that was an awful way to start. So yeah, go to the center, get yourself a mushroom. Don't forget to use the map on the touch screen to uh, give yourself an edge. Just keep bashing him until you can boost him off. But you won't really dash at you until you come close to him, so... Yep. As long as you don't fall off three times, you're good. What? Yeah. I did extremely poorly. Well, you beat a boss. And yeah. You get to go on to the next level. Although I have to redo this. The rank you get is basically whatever your lowest accomplishment was. Whatever your lowest rank was on any single stage throughout the entire level. So let's go for you again, you big bully bitch. I see you really like to play rough, huh? All right, then. I can play rough, too, you know. Back off. Back off. Back off. God, this guy is so hard-headed. Ah! Ah! Well, that went for... Oh, Okay. Nice to see you slipped and fell to your death. Oh, so close. Which now I can actually keep retrying. Which is helpful, because I don't want to have to keep going back to the menu like that. Now, eat crap! Oh, no, you don't. See, just develop a good strategy. Like mine is to basically hit him so you can rebound into the item. And there you go. An easy kill. Of course, kill him fast, and you know what comes. A great, great rank. <laughs> wow, you're just sitting there celebrating while you watch him drown. That's horrible, man. 
really is. It's so mean. At least I get rid of the music altogether. You know what? I may as well end the first episode on that, because... Well, I have a feeling it might go over a half hour. You know what? Screw it. Let's keep going. No. No. Sorry. You got a preview of what's to come. So let me just show you some of the stuff I've done. Let me just show you some of the stuff around Mario Kart DS in general. Just, just for the heck of it. So there's a Grand Prix mode, and, uh, well, you start off with these three, 50cc, easy, 100cc, medium, and a little faster, 150cc, hard, and the fastest. And then, if you could beat everything 150cc, you unlock 150cc mirror, which is basically, you know, the fastest mode, but the tracks are mirrored. So instead of turning left of the usual curve, you go right, all that. The controls are reversed, the track is. It's a little weird. And don't worry, it's not going backwards across the track, because some, some of them are impossible like that. They don't want to make any damn sense. And well, you have your racers here, featuring Mario, Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, Toad, damn small asshole, Donkey Kong, Proud, Wario, fat guy in his pit mobile, Bowser, of course, and four unlockable characters. Get through the first four cups in uh, 50cc, you get Daisy. Or it might be the first retro cups, I don't know. I always do retro and then the original first. I'll go over that later. Anyway, the four unlockable characters are Daisy and Dry Bones. You unlock through 50cc, I think. Unless I do them in order of like doing a string of four cups in each cc. I don't know. I don't know how the unlockables work. There's no way I did it. 50cc Retro Cups, Daisy. 50cc Normal Cups, Dry Bones. 100cc Retro Cups, Waluigi. And uh, 150cc Mirror Retro Cups, Rob. I mean, of course, why not? And well, as you can see here, they all have their sets of vehicles, which allow them to, uh, you know, have different stats. And you can unlock different sets of carts. You only start out with two, which are usually a special cart and a standard cart, which you can see the stats change. Normally stats improve for, you can get improvement of stats over the chance of uh, great items not being given. So you'll get weaker items generally. <clears throat> but yeah, it's better than nothing, I guess. Anyway, yep, yeah, you get your first two standard carts. You get the third card for the character. If you can beat all the cups, get gold on a hundred CC for the retro for the uh, normal cups, and then you can unlock seven of them, which you get four. You get four that are randomly assigned to them for some reason. If you beat 150 CC retro cups, I'll just pick one for now, just for the heck of it. Well, anyway, yeah, here's what I mean. There's the Nitro Grand Prix, which is basically the new courses. These are the courses that were originally made for Mario Kart DS. And I gotta say, for the most part, except for maybe Shroom Bridge, all of them are actually pretty good. I really don't have, like, one that I hate. Except maybe Shroom Ridge. Well, I win Shroom Ridge all the time, but it's just boring. And, uh, yeah. There's a lot of fun to be had here. As far as I can tell. You probably see a lot of these are featured in later Mario Kart games as well. In the form of Retro Cups. The Retro Grand Prix. See here, they picked a race out of every single Mario Kart before this one. And, well, redesigned it for this game. And, well, it's the same format for each of these cups in this game anyway. A Super Nintendo one, Nintendo 64 course, a Game Boy Advance course, and a GameCube course. As you can probably guess, it gets progressively harder as it goes. But, yeah, Choco Mountain is really hard. But, yeah... And then, of course, the Lightning Cup. Yoshi Circuit, why is that the last one, I wonder? I don't know, because that one's really easy. Well, by the way, those are your cups. I might as well show off all the uh, three cards which, uh, for each character, which... Well, once you unlock all 36, you can basically be everybody's vehicle, which is a little absurd. But these are the main three you can get easily, so I'll just show you those off for now. Luigi's here, this Poltergust 4000. God, you and your vacuum cleaners! Jesus! Oh, well, this Streamliner, which is pretty sweet. Peach and her Royale. Ooh. 
What a fancy vehicle. Oh, by the way, that emblem is something I created. I can show that off, too. She also has a light tripper. I tend to go over the vehicles that have better stats and don't really care about the items so much. Which is basically go backwards through the cycle at this point. We're uh, reaching everybody's carts. And, uh, yeah. You know what character has what stats so you know exactly what to go for. My main go-to is Mario, because I love a good balance in my driving. But yeah, some people may prefer, may think differently. Some people may like acceleration. Some others may like, uh... You know... Wait? I don't know. I prefer speed, but I also like a bit of everything, really. So I don't have a bit of everything, how the hell am I going to do my moves? Speed, acceleration, and handling are the three main key ones you want to have. At least in my mind. If you don't have those... You ain't going nowhere, buddy. You gotta make sure you really know what you're doing. Well, if you really want speed, Wario seems to be the go-to. Actually, no, he's not the go-to. I know who the go-to is. Because, oh boy. Why do you have a tractor? Why does Wario have a tractor? Where's your bike? I don't even know. Bowser's the main one for speed. I gotta say, that, that tyrant car looks pretty sweet. The Hurricane, oh wow, the Koopa Clown car got a ridiculously, a ridiculous looking upgrade, if you ask me. And, let's see what the, uh, unlockable characters have. The Power Flower, the standard DS, why is yours called like that? And another, a Light Dancer! Of course, you have to be similar to Peach in every way. Dry Bones, who, for some reason, is pretty good at off-road driving, probably because his speed is naturally very low. Pretty badass looking main vehicle, and then he's a little cute little tank. Damn, Dry Bones, you are ready for a racing war. And while Luigi with my favorite vehicle, the Gold Mantis. Mainly because it provides ultimate balance. Look at that. Pretty good speed. Well, good acceleration, decent weight, good handling, a good drift ability, but crappy items. You know what? I don't know why Waluigi is such a good character in this game. But yeah. Oh, you are the one that got the motorcycle. What the hell? Hey, don't knock me if you don't... What? I don't know where I was going with that. And Rob! The weird unlockable in this one. Who is probably also one of the best speed characters. And look at that. If you really don't care about your drifts and more care about your general driving ability, this is probably the best one to go for. What do you want items involved in the mix? Well, here you go. Is Rob Legs. He skips leg day, but he can always go back to it if he really needs to. He's kind of a dick like that. Man, that's a really high up vehicle. Can I really drive well? Eh, yeah, not that I care to know. Which, yeah, if you couldn't see, each of the cups I have, uh, there's a ranking. Which also, just like mission mode, can go from D to A, and then one star to three stars. Which depends on, uh, how well you do the, uh... I'm trying to think of a way to put it. It's how well you do in the races. That's it. That's it. It's how well you do in the races. Anyway, remember the emblem thing you saw? If I went to the uh, edit thing, I could show you that emblem. Which, well, you can create your own emblem to post on your vehicle when you play online and all that. Mine's kind of lame, but eh. It's one I've always done since I was a child. And you also choose not to use it if you choose to not have it visible. I showed it for an episode, that's good enough for me. And you have your own nickname, which I've given myself a trademark for no reason. That won't mean anything. <laughs> There's no trademark involved in this whole thing. What the hell am I thinking? I don't know. Well, there you go. I showed you a lot of the general stuff in Mario Kart DS. There's a lot. There's some other little things I could go over, but that'll be for another time. But hey, welcome to Mario Kart DS's uh, mission mode. Sorry for wasting the uh, last like, roughly 10 minutes just going over random stuff, but there's a lot to enjoy in this Mario Kart game, and I really, really appreciate this one. So, yeah, I hope people will take it to heart. Anyway, next time we'll be going to level 2 of the missions, and, well, see what the higher difficulty has to offer, and, well, if we go fast enough, we could probably knock out two levels in one episode. It all depends. Because, well, if you don't know by now, I like my 25-minute average length, if I could do that. I don't, I don't want to have to go longer if I don't have to, but we'll see what happens. I hope I don't hit a half hour, because that's when I get upset at myself. Anyway, see you guys next time for more Mission Madness.